Will this update for the iOS app change how you use Surfshark forever? Surfshark Antivirus got certified and Dynamic Multihop gets ported to macOS. Let's discuss. What is up guys and welcome to another edition of Surfshark Academy. February is over and I'm back here again summarizing all the news that happened here at Surfshark. First, we need to talk about a new Surfshark iOS app update that quite honestly is a game changer. With version 3.9, you can now use iOS shortcuts to automate VPN functions. For example, I made it so Surfshark connects to the VPN when I launch a specific app, in this case, YouTube. But then when I close YouTube, it automatically disconnects from the VPN. You can also make it so it works the other way around, meaning it will disconnect the VPN when you open a certain app and reconnect when you close it. A good use case for this are banking apps because, well, <laughs> banks tend to freak out when you try to make a payment from a whole nother country randomly. With this example, I'm just scratching the surface because you can really get creative here and make some really cool automations, like having the VPN get activated when you go to a certain location, such as a grocery store or a school or maybe disconnect from the VPN if your battery reaches a certain percentage. To use it, you will need an iOS device running iOS 12 or later. Android users, unfortunately, this is not available yet on Android devices, but I really, really wish it was because while in preparation for this video, I got to play around with shortcuts and now I really miss them after going back to Android. So let me show you how to set up your own automations. First, open up the shortcuts app, which has an icon like this, then tap here to open up a menu and select automation and then create personal automation. You will get a variety of options here. Let's scroll down a little and select app. Here, pick the app you want to add this automation to. I'll select YouTube, but again, you can pick a banking app or any other app for that matter. I'll also leave this option on is opened and click next. On this page, let's add an action and go to the apps category. Now find Surfshark and we will see all the available actions we can choose. Currently you can pick quick connect and disconnect options. However, in the future update, you will also be able to use pause and unpause. Anyway, I'll use quick connect for this action. To finish, click next and done. I also want to set it up so that the VPN will disconnect when I close YouTube. So for that, let's go through all the same options again, like we did before, but instead of opening the app, Let's set it up so that it will activate when closing YouTube and Surfshark should disconnect when the automation has started. Once everything is done, every time you open and close YouTube, it will connect and disconnect from the VPN. This is just a very simple example of how you can utilize iOS shortcuts together with Surfshark. But like I've said earlier, you can really go crazy and add all kinds of automations. So do give it a try and let us know what you came up with in the comments below. Speaking of great things, Surfshark Antivirus just got yet another certification by the industry leading antivirus testing organization called AV Test. Now AV Test is actually a really good resource for just about anything antivirus related. Plus they also list various new cyber threats as they have Happen, which is very useful information. AV test certifies and evaluates products based on three things. First is antivirus protection, meaning how well the viruses are caught. Second is performance. This relates to how much influence the antivirus program has on your device resources. And lastly, there's usability, which I actually found really interesting. It basically means how much does an antivirus bother you with false alarms and detections. Certification test results for Surfshark antivirus were actually really, really good. Key highlight here is the usability result, which was the maximum six out of six. And while other results were lower, this is still impressive considering that Surfshark antivirus is just less than two years old. More than anything, this is a good sign of seeing Surfshark antivirus moving to the right direction. But again, for more details, go check out the full report, which I will leave in the description below. Let's move on to talking about Dynamic Multihop, which has now been out for just about a month. I've personally been really enjoying setting up my own custom location pairs. Dynamic Multihop has been available on Windows, Android, and iOS, but the good news today is that it's now also coming to macOS with Surfshark app version 4.7. On the other hand, Surfshark is ending support for the original Multihop. This means that now, if you want to continue using this feature, you will need to have an app version that was released after the Dynamic Multihop update. On screen now, you can see which specific app version you will need. 
update. And you will notice that Multihop will no longer be available on the Surfshark browser extension. So if you are an app user, this is no biggie as by just updating the app, you will gain access to the much better and more customizable dynamic Multihop. However, if you are currently on the browser extension, then I suggest downloading the Surfshark Windows or macOS app via the website, which we will link below. Let's now get a few rapid fire news topics out of the way, starting with the release of Surfshark Windows app version 4.8.0. This version fixed bugs related to fake alarms about subscription expirations. Additionally, you can now use your Microsoft account to log into your Surfshark account as long as the emails match together. It's really neat and useful, especially if you don't use a Google account. That was not all, as many other improvements under the hood were also made. By the way, huge shout out to everyone on Reddit who reports app-related issues, as it does help Surfshark devs to resolve them if they appear. The Surfshark Android app has also been uplifted with new performance improvements and minor fixes to VPN connection stability. Make sure to update your app via the .apk file or the Google Play Store. By the way, if you are single and actively looking, you're probably using dating apps. In the latest Surfshark documentary video, my colleague Victoria unwrapped a worrying truth about them. Anyway, I found this video to be really interesting. Make sure to check it out. I'll leave a link to it in the description below and on the YouTube card right over here. Our second to last topic today is Discord. It is definitely my communication app of choice, and if it is yours as well, then you should consider joining the official Surfshark Discord. Just a couple of weeks back, Surfshark has opened up its Discord and now it is available to anyone. So if you like to discuss about Surfshark, technology, or even fun stuff like gaming, then definitely make sure to join the link is discord.gg forward slash Surfshark. Lastly, to finish the episode, I wanted to highlight a key development that happened last year in October. And that is that Surfshark won the CNET's Editor's Choice Award for Best Value VPN in 2022. There were so many updates coming out in 2022, as you may remember, that I actually completely missed this. CNET states, quote, Surfshark offered tremendous value with an impressive suite of privacy and security features, easy to use user interface, unlimited simultaneous connections, and one of the largest server networks in the industry, all at a price that's cheaper than most competitors. Now, when I saw this news a couple months back, I was very happy, but I also can't ignore the many positive comments that we get on our YouTube channel about Surfshark. So thank you guys as well for sharing the love and excitement. And if you're still looking to get Surfshark VPN, then make sure to use the code SHARKTUBE at the checkout to get two additional months for free. Of course, there are also free VPNs that you might have considered in the past or even now. They sure are attractive since they cost, what, next to nothing, but do they cost nothing? Well, I've dwelled deeper into this topic about free versus paid VPNs in one of our last videos, which I will link right over here. Definitely go check it out, but that'll be all for me. Take care.